currently running at CERN. Its aim is to study the finest constituents of matter and the forces between them. The main scientific challenge today is to understand those processes that took place at the very beginning of our universe right after the Big Bang. And the closer we want to arrive to these processes, the higher the energies we need to achieve. So the idea of the LHC is to take particles, accelerate them in a way to increase their energy, and finally make them collide and study what comes out of the collisions. And apart from one of the biggest machines ever built, the LHC is also a very complex one. It actually took more than 10 years, uh, 10,000 people coming from more than 100 different countries and uh, more than $6 billion for it to be built. And if we have a closer look at it, we can see that it actually consists of a succession of smaller accelerators that uh, gradually increase the energies of the particles before the collisions. It all starts from a bottle of hydrogen, from where we remove the, ele the electrons to get the protons beam. Uh, the protons receive a first acceleration on a small machine called booster, and then they enter uh, the proton uh, synchrotron uh, machine, where they increase uh, even more their energy. From the PS, they enter uh, the super proton synchrotron. And now from the SPS, half of uh, the protons enter the LHC on one direction, and the other half on the opposite direction. And in the 27 kilometers of the LHC, the particles arrive to their nominal energies, and finally they collide. And it's exactly then and there where the big moments for the physicists working at CERN begin. Now, the team I'm working for is called Beam Controls, and our mandate is to actually uh, control the particles of the beam throughout their journey in and out of these machines. So, for example, we need to provide solutions that would uh, guide the beam uh, out of one machine and into the next one on very precise moments, and other solutions that would monitor different parameters of the beam uh, at uh, any moment. I have put here uh, the images of some of these solutions, and as you can see, there is a need of uh, many uh, different uh, electronics. They're usually quite complex, and they have to be robust and reliable for the 10 to 15 years of operation of the LHC. Any design is composed by tens of different components. And by components uh, here, I mean more generally either IP blocks that would go inside FPGAs or integrated circuits. And some of these components we purchase by companies, so from all over the world, and some others we design in-house at CERN. And in the past, we have come across some uh, a bit nasty situations. So for example, uh, some of the components may become obsolete, so companies would stop producing them, and then it's uh, quite a painful uh, procedure to find alternatives. Uh, there are times companies may decide to increase prices of components, and uh, again, we have to find alternatives. And uh, finally, uh, sometimes we come across some unexpected bugs. And now, in the case of components that have been purchased by companies, uh, we have to report the bug and wait for a new release. And in the case of those that have been designed in-house at CERN, we have seen that sometimes maybe the documentation is not uh, sufficient or the design has not been very clean. Uh, so again, debugging is a painful uh, procedure. So all in all, uh, we have seen that relying on people, that uh, individuals that uh, design in their own corners, or relying on companies that may decide to change uh, their uh, policies without any notice, has ended up in costing us a lot in terms of time and money. And you may have also experienced similar situations of uh, vendor lock-in on a smaller scale in your everyday life, uh, like with connectors and SIM cards and capsules of your coffee machine. And uh, it's uh, in a world like this that uh, open hardware enters and makes sense. It comes with the idea of making everything we design uh, freely and openly available for it to be studied, modified, distributed, made, or sold. Open hardware is, of course, uh, inspired by the principles of free and open source software, and it's trying to implement them into hardware. So let's now have a look at the motivation behind uh, open hardware. So first of all, it's uh, the belief that there is a creative abundance in the world. We believe that there is a lot of uh, competent and um, 
uh, creative people. And uh, on top of that, there's a lot of uh, similar needs on different projects. So, for example, on our domain, there are more than 20,000 accelerators in the world, many of them facing quite similar problems. So we could avoid uh, making unnecessary uh, work if someone has already solved our problem. We could either collaborate with them uh, so as to make the end uh, product better, or we could put our efforts in something completely different. And uh, a key idea behind this uh, design reuse is being based on very well-established standards. Like this, we will ensure that the designs will be long-lasting and uh, that they would also be modular so that the addition and uh, removal of uh, features would be an easy work. Uh, here are some examples of uh, the standards we are basing our designs on in terms of communication, for example. So we have Ethernet for communication between different hosts, PCI Express for communication between devices in the same host, and Wishbone for communication between components uh, in uh, the same device. Another motivation is enjoying the contribution uh, from other people on uh, your specific project. So once you go open, chances are that uh, people would be interested in what you're doing. So you will get their feedback, you will get their critique, and you would have more pairs of eyes looking at your project from very different angles. On top of that, sharing also forces you to document better your design, to write a cleaner code, so you also become a better designer yourself. Open hardware provides also uh, a great learning tool as it offers a wealth of uh, well-documented, clean, and um, freely accessible designs. Finally, we believe that open hardware helps us create healthier relationships uh, with uh, companies. And here, maybe in comparison with free and open source software, companies play a very important role because actually someone has to produce, uh, has to manufacture the designs. And uh, we want to clarify here that when we talk about free and open, we don't refer to it as saying free beer. We consider it important to make sure that in none of our projects there is any unpaid labor. People need to make a living, and also more successful open projects have uh, indeed paid the developers. So when we talk about uh, free and open, we rather refer to it as uh, in freedom, the freedom that open hardware gives us to make use of things our way. With open hardware, there's no vendor lock-in, so one can select a company according to the added value it provides. So for example, manufacturing and testing quality, or uh, support or warranty. And in the software world, uh, uh, Red Hat is uh, one of the great examples of uh, such a relationship between a user and the company. And a couple of years ago, CERN wanted to, uh, to, to participate in this uh, open hardware movement and uh, profit from its advantages. It started from the section I'm working for, and then uh, several other groups are uh, also adopting our approach on uh, their, dis their projects. And again, we copied the uh, software world, and we knew we had to follow three uh, directions. So first of all, we needed a web place that would house the designs, similarly to the GitHub for software. Then we knew that we needed a license uh, that would provide the legal frame, similarly to the GPL for uh, the software world. And finally, we needed to make sure that the tools that are essential for uh, uh, designing hardware would also be freely and openly accessible, similarly to the VI and the GCC compiler for the software. The web place is the open hardware repository.org. It publishes everything uh, needed to review, modify, and manufacture our designs. It offers uh, a fully open access, so there's no uh, need for uh, an account, and itself it's built on uh, uh, free and open source software. Uh, here is an example of uh, one of our projects. Uh, you may see uh, the tabs on the top. Uh, so there's the activity on the project. Uh, there are issues uh, that uh, are uh, tracked, uh, news, uh, documentation, and the repository with uh, uh, source files. 
Uh, today there are 100 active projects, uh, 70 initiated by CERN and 30 outside CERN. Uh, there are 60 hardware designs and 40 IP blocks. We are 140 active developers coming from 12 companies and 10 research centers. Continuing now with the license, the lawyers at the CERN Knowledge and Technology Transfer Group, after a relevant uh, study, they decided that uh, there was indeed a need for defining a new license, as none of the existing ones, neither the GPL nor the Creative Commons, were actually mentioning something clearly about manufacturing goods. So the CERN Open Hardware License defines the conditions for using and modifying a design. It's a persistent license, so any modification or distribution has to happen under the same license. And like this, we ensure that everyone profits from the improvement. It's uh, clear and easy to read. It's just a couple of uh, pages long. And we have seen that it has made our uh, collaboration with uh, the others easier, especially those companies with big legal departments uh, that need uh, legal clarity. And there's a lot of different uh, products outside CERN and many times outside the electronics world that have been uh, published under the CERN Open Hardware License. Uh, sometimes they can be as uh, outside the electronics world as uh, a worm's farm. So uh, uh, there is uh, uh, these people that are developing uh, technologies for sustainable agriculture, and uh, they, are, uh, they have developed a, a solution for uh, transforming uh, waste, uh, food waste and paper into fertilizers uh, with the aid of tiger worms. Finishing now with uh, the tools, these are actually the last uh, parcel to sharing because they're, uh, today they're mainly uh, dominated by proprietary solutions. So uh, maybe a bit in comparison with software here, uh, the tools that are essential for building hardware are a bit uh, more uh, complicated. So regarding uh, gateware, so what goes inside an FPGA, there's the need of an HDL simulator. And regarding the design of uh, an electronics board, the steps would be a schematic, a PCB layout, artwork, uh, drilling, and uh, the instructions to the pick and place machine. And uh, currently, we are using uh, proprietary solutions for all these steps. However, uh, there are ongoing efforts for building free and open source software that would uh, cover all the steps. And CERN is participating in two projects. So there is Icarus for simulations, and there is the KiCad software suit for uh, all the steps of the PCB design. CERN is contributing mainly uh, with uh, manpower. And now I will try to put everything together and maybe give a better insight of uh, how things actually work. I will use uh, the example of one of our biggest open hardware projects. It's called the White Rabbit. On my presentation tomorrow morning, I will uh, give the details of the White Rabbit technology. But for today, I will just focus on uh, the evolution of the project in the frame of open hardware. So it all started by the needs of CERN to renovate one of the most critical systems of the accelerators. It's uh, the timing system. The timing system is actually responsible for giving a common notion of time to all the equipment installed in the different machines. And uh, like this, uh, the operation of the complex can be coordinated with uh, sub-nanosecond accuracy. And uh, from the beginning, it was decided to base uh, the project on well-established standards like Ethernet. And it went public, and uh, several different institutes and uh, companies were interested. They were having uh, similar needs. And it was really exciting moments receiving those mails from people all over the world. So uh, there is an experiment in Siberia, another one in China, and another one in the bottom of the Mediterranean. And there were also several companies uh, interested, uh, like very big ones, like uh, national instruments and also smaller ones. And uh, different players would uh, build upon the initial ideas. They would take parts of the design, they would uh, modify them, and they would create new products according to their own needs. Peer reviewing also worked very well. So for example, the companies that would uh, manufacture and sell uh, white rabbit components for the CERN needs. They would um, spot weak points, they would report them to us, and then we would solve them together in collaboration. 
Today, white rabbit technology is uh, available by several different uh, companies, and one can uh, select where to purchase them from according to the pricing or uh, the support it provides. Finally, there are also ongoing processes for the standardization of the white rabbit technology, as it's uh, the next new big thing in the world of synchronization. To conclude, we believe that uh, open hardware leads to better designs. It uh, makes companies add value to them. It puts more players into the game. And it makes us enjoy building hardware in collaboration with people from all over the world. Thank you. Are there questions? We have plenty of time. Yes. Great, super talk, thanks. Um, the, the general public license um, version three has, a, has um, a special clause in there that protects against um, down, downstream threats from um, software patents. Do you, do you have anything similar in the, in the um, open hardware license uh, yourself to protect from such sort of uh, such I'm problems? Sorry. To be honest, they have not been implicated mm. in, in, in the license um, procedure, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's better not to give a, a reply, but uh, of course I can contact the responsible and come back to you. Yes, you, uh, you mentioned something about uh, FPGA-based uh, well, logic design tools, but you're also thinking about tools for uh, tape-out, like uh, well, a real making the masks for chips, and uh, well, those very low-level tools. Uh, to be honest, we are now focusing on, on these higher level ones, and there's still a lot of work to be done on those ones. Hello, can you tell us more about fun? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's true, it's true, absolutely. So, uh, to be honest, I think the most exciting moments that, that I have, also, according to my opinion, that I have also lived is when you receive the mails from people that are interested in what you're doing, and when they come, uh, turn, and uh, you, 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 you exchange your ideas, and then they reuse parts of uh, what you have done, and they evolve them, and you see the outcome. I would say that's the funniest part, at least for me. The fact that you know that you're not alone. And I think also the tools actually work, right? Excuse me? The tools actually work. I've seen so many of these industrial standard tools fail and being complicated to install and maintain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've seen so many of these professional industrial style closed source tools be very complicated to install and maintain. So it actually works if you write the software yourself. But there is one question up there. Uh, yeah, it was, oops, sorry, that's really loud. I was wondering for the open hardware software, or for the open hardware repository, um, is it limited to a specific scope of applications? Like, does it have to be like really serious business physics applications, or could I have things like interactive art hardware pieces uploaded as well? Uh to be honest, I think we're uh, we are quite open. I mean, the, the idea is being open, so. I tend to think that everything is welcome. I, however, maybe I'm, I'm not absolutely responsible in replying on that. But uh, for example, in the open I hardware license, uh, as I mentioned, there's so many other applications otherwise uh, outside the CERN and outside, far outside electronics that uh, are using it. So the spirit is being open. Thanks. Uh, hello. Uh. Uh, I would like to know, uh, all projects held on the Forge are all related to uh, activities of CERN or? No, no, there are also uh, uh, projects outside CERN. From the 100 that we have actively now, around 30 of them I come outside CERN. Uh, f to my knowledge, the 30 are within the electronics world, uh, but uh, there can be outside CERN too. So with the, um, you're talking about the white rabbit and that it's moving towards the IEEE standardization. My experiences with I IEEE have not been very positive because you have to generally pay for the standards. Uh, did you think there might have any problems in that direction or? Actually it was, I think a couple of uh, uh, months ago that uh, in, a, in a conference of uh, IEEE it was uh, more or less agreed that it, it, uh, white rabbit is going to be standardized. 
of course, it's it's a it's a huge procedure to standardize something in IEEE, but uh, I think it, it was agreed. Well, thanks a lot for your uh, <coughs> lecture. Um, <coughs> one question. You have mentioned the FPGAs on the left side, just the simulation, right? Uh, but the following stuff, which come down, down to the bitstream, are still missing. I can't see, can you avoid the uh, render lock-in or not? Even for simulation, you need a model for, even for every RAM, for every stuff which is on the FPGA. And the models are comes from the vendor. So how do we will do it? Uh, again, I'm, I'm afraid that I won't be able to reply in detail. I have again not been implicated in the in the software tools, so I, I I'm not sure I will give a good reply. I'm sorry. Uh, of course, I, I can put in touch with the responsibles. So uh, two questions. Uh, the first question you mentioned, uh, kind of partnering with companies. Uh, do you have a positive experience that also companies gain from your open hardware kind of motivation? Um, is there kind of good feedback from them or how do you partner up? Could you specify this a little bit more in detail? Actually, for companies, we, uh, since they have uh, very low entral, uh, entry costs for a, a given technology, we have seen that they're quite eager in, in, in playing uh, the game. So uh, they, have, uh, they take advantage of the published research and development. And um, so it, it, it's profitable to them. And that goes for, for the smaller companies. Uh, bigger ones, like uh, National Instruments, is uh, again, at least in the White Rabbit uh, case, was uh, uh, quite interested and... No, no, my question was also, aren't they afraid of you being there uh, saying, well, we make measurement hardware, for example, national instruments, I could imagine that they see part of their business model uh, it's, it's being, true that it's going new. away. It's true that it's new. It's a new concept and you have sometimes to convince companies and to explain them and uh, they have to assess their risks, but uh, so far we have seen that Okay, regarding the online platform, is there kind of a minimum quality threshold? For example, I have a lot of projects which I can immediately upload there, not documented, not uh, kind of specified. Is there anything, what is the minimum threshold? What is your, what is your limit? What has to be provided to get into your, onto your platform? I think there are not rules, or at least there are not rules yet, but the documentation, I would say, is one of the things that we're really trying to, to have. Uh, so, for example, let me go back to one of the, the projects. I, I can show you what a typical project provides, needs to provide. So, uh, an overview of the project, some wikis, uh, the activity that's done automatically, issues that open and close and are uh, tracked down, news, documentation, and all the source files. Of course, you can have a look at many of the examples on the site. OK, that's it. Uh, over here, we have a question via ISC from the user Helkin. And he's asking, GPL is known to be a non-translatable license. Is OHL translatable? Uh, we could use it slash promote it in Latin America. He's asking. Again, I'm, I'm very sorry. I, I, I don't know. But um, I will uh, get in contact with the responsible and reply. OK, thanks. <laughs> Regarding the open hardware, this project, is there an, uh, also an open project related uh, studies in uh, the laboratory experiments to uh, share open source? Is there a project related open source but with the actual function of CERN? Yeah, actually, everything at CERN is uh, public. CERN is a publicly funded institution, so all the information about CERN was anyway 
available. Uh, we are absolutely everything. Nothing stays secret, that's room. I was told there was a question up in front here somewhere. Not anymore. Oh, I let my assistant run. That's nice. Run, run, run. Uh, sorry, first of all, I would like to make a little notice about the non-translatable nature of the GPL license. Well, uh, from the one point of view, uh, translated text of the license, GPL speaking about, uh, well, translated text will not have um, power in the field of law, but it doesn't mean you can't translate it for, um, uh, for normal use to understand the sense. Uh, for example, yeah, uh, you should provide English language text of the GPL, but it doesn't mean you, you can't uh, do uh, some half official translations. Well, but uh, that's rather <laughs> uh, my own opinion about the translating of GPL, because we had, um, had thought about it in context of Russian translations. And uh, the question will be a little bit about the efforts of Sun Microsystems, which uh, opened some years ago uh, its Niagara processors. Maybe you remember. How would you um, characterize um, the result of the efforts? Uh, from the point of view of the open hardware as a whole. Was it, well, you know, uh, there was no any uh, company who wanted to produce their processors using their uh, opened uh, documents. But, well, uh, from the point of view of um, open hardware, was it useful or not? So uh, we are deep, diving deep into uh, legal issues here, um, and we are running out of time for the next talk. So oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe you could uh, do this in private? Um, yes, of course. Of course, there is plenty of time left outside this room, but not here because we have three minutes to the next talk, and we have to prepare the technique. So thank you. Thank you for your talk. <laughs> <laughs>